Great. Thank you very much uh, for accepting the last minute talk. Honestly, after Adam's emailing the list, I wasn't sure if I was actually presenting or not. Uh, but glad that this worked out. Um, so uh, let me give a very, very quick background. Uh, I work with Zero Point Technologies. My name is Yanis Nikolakopoulos. Uh, we've been, we, we're a hardware startup for the last few years, and we've been working in uh, main memory compression one way or another for the last few years. And uh, lately, the focus has been uh, CXL type 3 devices and memory expanders. And uh, I'm, I'm going to skip all uh, the business side of things. I will just plug in exactly to what Adam said about the OCP memory expander specification. Um, so, basically, this spec uh, defined uh, a requirement for Type 3 devices to have uh, compressed memory. And right now, we have an IP uh, that actually meets these requirements. Uh, and we are working with uh, six integrators uh, to get this to market. And so, what I'm what I'm looking into from this talk is to, to really get the, the community's perspective into how to make this kind of IP as broadly usable as possible. And we are willing to put in the effort to push in a, an upstream kernel driver, and we would be happy to get uh, like the right direction uh, so that we, we work on this. Uh, and please interrupt me for questions uh, at any point. So let me start by the baseline, right? Uh, conventional tier memory layout, nothing weird here. We have a host, a directly attached tier memory, and, and uh, a direct, sorry, directly attached tier one, which is a directly uh, standard DDR uh, DRAM. And the tier two, which is uh, remote memory over CXL, typically accessed through .NET commands. Uh, obviously, I will give an overview of the IP so that I can explain the, uh, the interfaces we expose and how things change for the host. So in the baseline, typically, uh, both of these two tiers uh, are visible to the host as uh, host physical address space. Uh, and I, I guess this audience knows very well uh, how this uh, works, especially on the, on the CXL driver side. And typically when the host tries to access part of this physical address space that corresponds to the tier two, uh, the data will be translated from the HPA to the device physical address space, and then be written to the device, going through the entire CXL link and so on. Probably I'm overly simplifying a few things, but that should be the gist of it. And what changes with our IP, which is called Densman, by the way, is that we now introduce what we call a TR3, which is still a remote memory over CXL. From the host point of view, it's still accessed through standard .NET commands. And, but in react to to really gain but now this is a compressed memory tier right and it's completely managed by our ip and our firmware so what changes here is that the address space we expose the dpa we expose for this tier three is actually oversubscribed it's a larger dpa than what the backing media is and the way this works is that if the host tries to write some data that correspond to this uh, it, uh, HPA will go through the Sixer controller, then it will go through our IP, will be compressed, compacted, remapped to a different address. And by doing this continuously, that's how we manage to expand the memory capacity of the device. So we expect that the host is the one making the decisions in general in, in the tiered memory system about uh, Whose, uh, which pages are migrated to which tier. And so the host controls the data migration, controls the demotions and promotions. 
But on top of that, the, the requirement we now add is that we expect the host to react upon the changes uh, in the memory capacity as we report it by the telemetry. Because the actual device physical address space is static in that sense. But we have an additional telemetry where we report, the, uh, we report back the, the, the remaining capacity. And the basic configuration we have uh, in the IP is basically the size of the compressed address space and then how much we oversubscribe it. For example, we can create, I mean, if we were talking about a one terabyte media, we could create a two terabyte address space on top of that. And this two terabyte would be VPA exposed through CXL business as usual. Now, the additional APIs we provide um, and all of these, again, they comply with uh, it, it, they, they comply with the, spec, the OCP specs, but we would now would like to go through them a little bit more in detail. Um, so there is uh, a set of .io uh, back pressure, capacity back pressure APIs, as we call them. And first, there's telemetry for the remaining actual free space, not the DPA, but the actual remaining media. Then we have uh, four watermarks that can be configured from high, medium, low to critically low. And the idea is that as the um, remaining capacity goes through these watermarks, there is, an, uh, there is an interrupt, an MSIX interrupt raised to the host, so that the host can take evasive or mitigative actions depending on which watermark is crossed. At the same time, internally, the IP also takes its own evasive actions uh, be that back pressure on the right path or changing the tuning of the compressor uh, or even running the fragmentation more actively. And finally, there is an, also an additional .io command for freeing capacity, uh, which is basically an opt-in side channel for the host to override DPAs with zeros uh, if, without doing it from the .mem. So we expect that the host software overall is expected to utilize this interface so that it lowers the right utilization of the dense monitor space and migrate out of it, migrate data out of it as the capacity goes to critical. So trying to put this all this together, I mean the OCP specs is basically what enable uh, what to define the host to see a compressed memory, but this uh, can still be done through a, uh, an overcommitted address space. So it's a, it's a linear address space, again, business as usual. As the host reads and writes data from the dot mem, they go through our IP, they are compressed and decompressed in line. We handle the, other, the translation from the device address space to the compressed address space, the real address space uh, entirely in hardware. And we report back through the .io channel uh, the remaining capacity and the other APIs that I just mentioned so that the host can react accordingly and basically stop sending data if we're running out of capacity or even migrate data out of it. So this is really the, the, the core of it. Uh, at least on how it looks like uh, from the post point of view. I'm, I'm not going, uh, I, I think this is the most interesting uh, part for this venue, but I'm happy to uh, discuss any questions. And then what we would like, what we're trying to understand now is how we could help in, uh, uh, what's the best way to add upstream kernel support for this? I mean, starting from baby steps, it does sound like this is a, some kind of memory that only user space would like to use at first. One thought that I had, but I'm, I'm not really sure of the repercussions, is to even allow kernel space, but only for uh, zone movable pages. Um, and overall, yeah, we're thinking right now that, yeah, we should work on a driver that will expose the APIs of these .io nodes but then we're trying to understand how this uh, will be utilized by anyone that is making migra uh, 
steering migration decisions. So that's all I had for now. Any thoughts or questions? Um, I'm just curious, uh, since CXL is all about adding a truckload of memory uh, availability, um, why do we care about compressing them? Uh, so the business side of it is even more ECO reduction, uh, even more total cost of ownership reduction, basically. And uh, I, I mean, I've, I've skipped all the spec features of the IP, but uh, the latency can be pretty low, and uh, of course there are. Uh, you're, 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 big you're, 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 you're adding latency to something that are, is already more expensive. Yes, uh, but it's uh, it's it's not as much. Uh, you, you know, I I, I think you know, looking at the OCP spec though. Uh, that's not a like a fight for us to have, if that makes sense, right? Like it's been put out there, yeah. what what they want, right? And if you meet that, it seems like that's fine, right? And you you support those algorithms. But I agree, conceptually, you, you know, it's there. But it's a cost savings thing for sure, right? Like if yeah. now yeah. that this memory controller is on this device, if you could compress the memory and get more out of it, why not, right? Hi, this is David. So um, I'm just trying to figure out how that could be used by Linux. And the only thing that really makes sense to me is if you fake as if you would be you would be C swap, and you avoid the struct page for the memory. You even avoid the direct map or whatsoever, and you just use you fake like you are C swap, and avoid the metadata for your memory. That might be, I mean, you don't have to compress yourself, you don't have to allocate memory and do all of that. You would just like pass it to the device and that might be something reasonable. It, it, it would be like a Z-swap that, but that you could directly map though. Like if you, if, you need, if you needed to read it back, you wouldn't, have to, uh, you wouldn't have to swap it back in to read it. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it doesn't Z-swap by, by default mean that we are talking about uh, unmapped pages that are on the swap out path. Matthew, do you uh, remember... Then you Sorry, uh, Matthew, do you remember the file systems that used to compress because the drives were not big enough? So you would store compressed and then uncompress. So we're going back. Yeah, we still have those. Wait. And and if your link if your link is slow enough, then compressing to send it over it make makes sense. Right? I mean I don't think the problem is that the, the, the CXL link is slow is is slow. It's that it's high latency. And I don't see that compression is helping anything at this point. But so, but if but if it's a if it's a cold memory tier like if, if if you're just demoting to it we're basically saying like I just want I want more capacity I want it to stick around I don't want it to go all the way back to disk can you because disk is even higher latency um, is is this a tier I, I mean for yes. the C swap use case that I mentioned it would offload compression to the CXL device so it would be offloading. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually really sympathetic to the idea of using CXL as a layer of swap, as a, as a layer of storage. It's, it's, it's just, you know, when people start talking about using CXL for like a actually direct accessed uh, CPU stuff that, but I, I mean, PCIe is fundamentally a storage bus, right? It, it, it's, it's not a, a, a memory access bus. And um, I, I, I think the idea of using it as a layer of swap, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Like transfer an entire page at a time, great idea. It, it, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not convinced that compression is the interesting part of this. But I mean, that's not up to me, is it? <laughs> okay, let, let me try to, to, to say, to, to, uh, to cover a couple of things from the comments. Uh, well, one uh, quick comment, comment, you know, 
when I look at this, right, it's all a latency play, to be honest, right? I don't care locally attached. I don't care about compression, right? Like those things will all come out if the latency is good enough. This is the way I see it, right? And how much does it impact your application? So it's like the discussions about all those other details kind of wash out in my opinion, right? It's like, how does it, end, it impact your end application? And if it's within some tolerance, you would, I believe, tolerate a lot of these things, right? It's not, it's not whether or not it's there, it's what latency does it introduce? But anyway, okay, that's all I wanted to say. I, I, I agree with that. And what, what I would like to add here, and maybe I'm wrong, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I've understood all this space is that, I mean, sure, we, we've had very good solutions that are ZSwap based or ZRAM based or uh, of, of that sort. Uh, but these are always unmap the pages and basically to bring the data back in, you have the the page fault uh, latency. And that's that's the area where, to my understanding, the type the memory expanders of type three used in tiering mode under that restriction at least. This is the gap that they bridge, right? Because the the type three devices uh, would allow you to have an extra memory tier. Uh, that doesn't carry the, the page fault uh, latency, right? Pages are still mapped. Yes, the latency is a little bit higher, uh, but at least it's it's good enough to to keep your lukewarm or your cold pages there. And with the compression, we, we just expand this additional memory tier. Uh, we add an extra memory tier in, in that hierarchy. I mean, we I usually actually have a a marketing slide where we just position ourselves right be, uh, right below the typical dot mem, uh, and to give I, I would like to I actually on purposely on purpose skipped the uh, the IP feature slides where we talk about latencies and uh, how things change, but. I can roughly say that the IP usually carries a pretty large cache, uh, which uh, balances out the, the latency curves uh, to a big extent. And going back to Adam's comment, yes, the uh, the OCP specs are actually pretty stringent on the latency requirements. And uh, yeah, long story short, we, we comply with that. And one, one comment, I, can, I, I think I it can... can consider questions, right? I yeah. kind of see the character dev dax mode, right? Because you don't need the struct page there. It's all PFN based, right? And and so that seems like a reasonable path to show off this kind of approach. No, we 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 we, we, we do have pages in that path, um, but um, I mean, yeah, we're trying to get rid of it. But, but like, like I think we. Uh, you're asking you're asking the question like, hey, where should we upstream this? And and that, and that might be that may be something we can. I, I don't um, like. I, like I, I think I know where we don't want it to be. We don't want it to be. We don't want to be in the situation where we are under memory pressure, and if we start if we start writing to memory, we actually make the memory pressure problem worse because we're writing uncompressible things, and now we need even more capacity. So like we, this is. I think this is, this is why people jump to ZSwap because ZSwap is opportunistic. You can say, hey, can you accept the page? If you can, you like that can fail. So like having this in a in a path where you can front swap say say no yeah a, a, a front cache or something like this to say can you accept it can you make it can you make this take this off my hands and have that be able to fail it, and you know the second thing I think is very interesting for me is that .io interface right like because of you know we've talked about type two or you know type three is already kind of you know restricted which is reasonable right you know but the type two would be some sort of accelerator, or have some other .io interfaces. And you know, we've talked about how the memory would be owned by the current CXL driver, right? For, for a type two, like you kind of stubbed it out. But like, what do we do with how to talk to the device, right? That, that's very unclear to me, right? To like, it will take someone to write it and then the discussion to happen, in my opinion. I think, I think another problem this is running into is the fact that we don't have great promotion interfaces to know when to pull things out of colder memories into into higher like we, we, we have we have the, the strong swap in signal but like one of the things that where pmem never got to was 
well, maybe we can use PMM as a swap device that we can sometimes skip, skip the swap in path because we can access it in place. And, and we're like, well, yeah, that, that kind of works. But then what if we actually do, how do we get the signal about when we actually promote it out, promote it out of there? And so, like, I mean, this is, this is a general MM problem where we, we, we don't have good, a good promotion path for hot pages. I, I just have yeah, a, a, a cl clarifying question. At some point, you mentioned address remapping, and I, I got a little bit scared. What exactly is address remapping? I, I do a write to a page, and I get a new address. So this is actually something that the kernel never never sees. Ah, that's just um, like internal tracking of the mapping. Okay. Yes. But, yes. but it could mean if, if I write too much to the device that at some point writing to will simply fail because the device is out of memory, right? Exactly. Or what, 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 how would that manifest? An MCE? But, or? Uh, uh, on, on the very worst case, it manifests as a poison, basically, on that page. Okay, thanks. Uh, but, but hopefully all this uh, makers should have uh, meeting whoever is the decide the, whoever decides the data migration path should have taken the signals from the interrupts here and never reached that uh, that level uh, but I uh, one thought that they have and I completely agree that the I mean it's I think it's quite difficult the, f the fact that we don't have uh, as, uh, uh, sorry I, I missed who said that that we are missing a good promotion path and this is one of the assumptions we we make as an IP vendor that we we can't do everything right so we assume that somebody else takes control of the promotion demotion decisions I mean uh, I, I think the same discussion came uh, Yesterday, when uh, David Rietje's talk uh, about the memory tiering working group, like, would it be Daemon? Would it be uh, the standard NUMA path? And I understand the the problems of adding such kind of uh, memory in the standard NUMA path. I mean, I would be skeptical as well. Does does the device tell you the most operative, like, like the least comp like the, give you like a priority, like least compressible memory to migrate for like highest highest benefit kind of thing. Like migrate this page and and it to to get the most capacity back, or is it just kind of running out of memory? Please migrate whatever you can. There, there are actually yes, there, there are quite a few uh, performance counters that uh, that cover this kind of cases. So there there is more telemetry than what I show here. Yes. And we will be happy to document that. It 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 strikes me that like if, if we're talking about someday devices reporting hot page information, that if this at least followed the same model of like this page is hot because if because I can't I can't hold it anymore, <laughs> like it's literally a hot potato. Um, maybe maybe it fits into the same model. Yeah, yeah, it 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 could be. Uh, and of course, we, I mean, we hope at least that uh, we will be around for a while. So it's not going to be just one generation. I mean, we are, we want to keep improving this and uh, uh, over generation by generation. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing also a few comments on the chat, actually. What was that? Um, yeah, I, I see a few comments on the on the chat of, of the Zoom link. And gave roughly, basically, some people say that yeah, this type of device could be used as a CAS for a database or memcas slower than DRAM, but faster than loading stuff from SSD. I think we covered that. Um, and Christoph Lameter is asking that it transfers full pages. Uh, no, I, I said that for simplicity. This is standard dot .mem accesses. Uh, so it, it will 
the data is accessed cast line by cast line. It, it's fully uh, CXL compliant in that sense. Uh, we do have a page cast inside the IP that's handling the compression and decompression. And, and that's why I gave the examples as pages. Okay. And in the end, he's asking if we are compressing individual cast lines. I didn't cover these parts in the talk. Uh, in fact, we in this first generation, we have two different compression algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, please. Well, I was, was going to say, we're, 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 we're running, running short on time, but um, uh, so we might have to end it here. But, but I think, yeah, bringing, bringing, bringing questions up on the list, um, I also think yeah, looking at front swap and Z swap and is probably where, where kind of the consensus in the room where we felt, felt most comfortable where this stuff might fit upstream. But yeah, let's, let's follow up on the mailing list if you have some more. OK. I'll, I'll be glad to, to take the discussion there. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for offering this.